When working with an image in a button design, there may be times where you want to erase a portion of the image. For example, to erase the background behind an object that appears in the image. In Build a Button, you can erase a portion of an image using the Image Eraser tool. First, you'll want to select the image that you want to work with. So you could select that layer on the Layers panel or simply click on the image within your button design. And then, on the toolbar up at the top, you can choose the Image Eraser tool. So I'll click that, and that will bring up the Remove Background dialog. The idea here is that we need to identify the edge of the object that we want to extract, as well as some of the details of the object and the background that we want to remove. We'll start by identifying the edge of the object with a yellow highlight. You can paint directly on the image, so you'll find toward the top left the tool for painting on the edge of the object you want to extract. So you can click the pop-up and choose a size, for example, and then simply paint along the edge of the object. However, you can also create an automatic selection of that edge. So I'll click the Undo button to take a step backward, and then choose the Magic Wand tool, and then we can adjust the tolerance. In other words, how similar do areas need to be in order to be considered part of the background? So we could adjust this tolerance setting up or down, and we can also identify a border size. I'll go ahead and increase the size of that border just a little bit in this case. That will effectively identify a thicker edge of the object so that there's more area being evaluated. I'll then click, in this case, in the background of the image, and that will create an automatic selection based on the area that I clicked. In other words, looking for areas of the image that match where I clicked, and then obviously areas that are different, and that defines the edge of our object. I then want to identify areas of the object by highlighting in green. So I'll go ahead and click the green button here, and then I can click and drag within the area of the image that I want to keep. If I need to erase any of those areas, I can click the Eraser tool and then paint in the area that I want to erase. I'll then choose the red tool and then click and drag through the background area so that now yellow identifies the edge of the object that I want to extract, Green represents a sampling of some of the areas of the object that I want to keep, and red represents the areas that I want to remove. While you're working, of course, you may find it helpful to zoom in or zoom out, and then use the hand tool to pan the image around to move the view of the image. You can also start over by resetting by clicking on the button to clear the selection. And if you need to work with a completely different image, you can click the select button in order to load a different photo. At this point, though, I think I'm ready to convert this image to remove the background, and so I'll click the Convert button. That image will then be processed, and then I'll see a preview of the result. So now that processing is completed, I might feather the edge just a little bit to get a little fuzzier edge with some transition between the object and the background. I can also add a shadow, if I'd like, of a particular size. And then you can crop the image. Generally, you can just use the auto checkbox so that the image is automatically cropped to the edge of the object you've extracted. There's also some preview options up at the top right. So I can choose a background color to display behind the object that I've extracted. I can also see just a preview where the object has been extracted. I can see a preview that shows me that outline of the edge of the object with a dark overlay or without the dark overlay using those four buttons up at the top right. In this case, I think I have a pretty good extraction, and so I can choose how I want to create this image. I can output as a PNG file with transparency or as a JPEG image choosing a particular background color. Generally speaking, if you're extracting an object from an image, it's probably so that other objects or colors within your button design show through, and so typically I would recommend the PNG option. You can then click the Add to Canvas button in order to add the extracted image to your button design. And so now you can see that the extracted image blends in with the background color. And so as I change the background color, for example, I'll see that reflected with my object now set out against the background of my button design.